this is Melissa Ciudakis with A Breath of Fresh Marketing. Today we have Brittany Cherry from Dancing with the Stars. She's a dancer and choreographer. Welcome, Brittany. Hi. Yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, How are you? <laughs> I'm well, thank you, considering everything. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for asking. Of course, of course. Well, for those of you who don't know me, I am a dancer choreographer. I've worked in the live television industry for the past eight years. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I'm from Utah and I have two dogs and I like to be happy. (laughs) Nice. So how did you get into dancing? You know what? I have been dancing my entire life. Um, I started dancing just when I was a kid. My dad used to play the piano and I would just dance and dance around. And, you know, PBS used to have this ballroom uh, sort of public show that they used to put on. And I saw it and I was in love with it. I was two and a half and my mom put me in like ballet beginner class because I just loved my VHSs that were like dance along things. But when I was five, I saw this ballroom program and I fell in love and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. So I stalked almost every boy in my first grade class. I was like obsessed. And some sorry little kid said yes. And I began ballroom dancing when I was five years old. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Very cool. I, uh, I used to do dancing as a kid. Uh, my parents put me in jazz and hip hop. Oh, nice. How long did you take that up? Uh, several years. And then later on, I eventually took uh, salsa lessons nice. and cha-cha. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I really, oh yeah, loved it. Uh, it's great. And you know, I'm always watching Dancing with the Stars, and you know, I'm really into dancing. I don't get to do it anymore, but uh, well, I was going to ask, when was the last time you danced? Uh, well, <laughs> if we count me dancing in my uh, den with my daughter yesterday, then oh, <laughs> that was gosh. the most recent time. <laughs> I love that. You know what? That counts. You know, dance is so such an incredible thing to have in our lives. And, you know, not everybody is actually physically able to dance. And so, uh, I just think it's so wonderful when people just get up and let the music take them away, whether it's like dancing in their living room with their daughters or taking a dance class or whatever that may be, just swaying in a grocery store to like the tune that's going on. It's just such a powerful thing. And it just, you know, gives so much positivity back to yourself and creates a lot of happiness that I think gets a little overlooked sometimes. Absolutely. And yeah, I, I do that with my daughter every night. So I'm I love it. With her and she loves it. And she says, mommy, I'm a ballerina. And she spins oh around. Oh my gosh. How old is she? She's three. Oh my gosh. Just young enough. Yeah. <laughs> so once, once COVID gets under control, then I can finally get her some dance lessons. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yep, it's got to get to the right place, but she will love it. So you're not shy about sharing your experiences with having sensory neural hearing loss in one ear and conductive hearing loss in the other, which ultimately led you to dancing from an early age. How has that impacted the way you listen to music and choreograph dance moves? Well, um, being deaf didn't exactly lead me to dancing. Well, I guess, I guess in a way it did, but... Um, I was born, if for those of you who don't know those like terms of hearing loss, I was born completely deaf in my right ear, and I have um, a little bit of hearing loss in my left ear, but different types of hearing loss. So, you know, being born with that it came with its own struggles and own communicative struggles, and I had to, you know, it was a little bit harder for me, especially when it came to communicating. So dance... I loved it. I just loved it. It became my outlet. So I guess in a way it did lead me to dancing. And um, it was my way of feeling understood and feeling expressive because sometimes I just didn't feel a confident to talk very much just because, you know, I, I had insecurities about talking out loud because of my hearing. And I went to um, talk therapy and 
mm-hmm. things like that to help with that. But dance definitely uh, carried that torch throughout my childhood as my outlet. Um, as far as listening to music, I hear music the same you and everyone else does who's able to hear. Um, the only difference is I have a big issue with directional sound. You know, sometimes you put your headphones in and some of the music is in one headphone and the other part of the music is in the other. So those times I really struggle. And so if you put that on a big scale and you're in a room and only some of the sounds are coming out of one side of the the speakers on a stage and another part of the music is coming in from the speakers on another side of the stage. That's when I get a little bit like, Oh, what's happening. But as I've grown up, I've learned to adapt. I've learned to study the music and understand what I'm hearing before. Obviously I get on stage, but, um, I would say the biggest issue with my hearing loss, especially when I was younger and I was still learning, was the bass notes. And bass notes and men with very deep voices, I have such a difficult time identifying and articulating, and sometimes it goes completely over my head and I don't hear it at all. So I would say that was probably the hardest thing about it growing up. And now as an adult and having been working in television and live events, I am at a point now where I need to just protect what little hearing I do have left. So, you know, most people have hearing loss that they're just a little bit unaware of. Um, but for people like me, it's just important to, you know, preserve the hearing that you do have and make sure you're taking care of yourself, especially if you're working in entertainment or loud music or loud environments, You know, hearing is a beautiful gift that not everyone has. And um, I'm just grateful to have the little hearing that I do. Absolutely. I'm so proud to be a part of the deaf community, which is an amazing, incredible, inclusive, supportive community. That's great. Yeah. So how was your childhood? I mean, what was your favorite childhood memory? Oh, my gosh. That's such a... A uh, hard question to pinpoint just one moment. Um, I I had a great childhood. You know, my parents are divorced. They split up when I was 13. But my parents have always, both of them have been so supportive and encouraging to me and my career and my dreams. And um, they are my number one supporters and biggest fans. Um, and... I was so rich with love as a child and support. So I think that kind of just encaptures my whole childhood. My mom did so much to support me in my journey. So she's my like rock star. But I think, you know, my favorite memory as a child that's so hard. (laughs) That's so hard. Um, But if, if we're talking about dance, you know, my dad would play these tunes on the piano and I would just dance around in my dress up. And those were really cool moments when the whole family was around and we got to do that stuff. And I would say as a child dancing, I think my favorite moments were the moments when we were in a sweaty dance studio at 11 p.m. with the lights turned off and just dancing our hearts out. And those were the, mo- those were the moments that made it all worthwhile. It was so rewarding. Nice, for sure. So what was it like competing for and eventually winning the 2006 Dancing with the Stars Kids Merit Ball Trophy? Oh, my gosh. So that was a whirlwind. So what a lot of people don't know is the ballroom, competitive ballroom circuit is very small, especially back then. It was very small. There weren't many children in it. Um, It was much less popular because, you know, Dancing with the Stars has only been around for so long. So it was becoming more popular. But um, a lot of the Dancing with the Stars pros at the time, you know, I grew up competing around and training with. And I grew up with Derek and Julianne Huff, And I've known Mark Ballas my whole life. So these were all people that were on the show at this time. So it wasn't something that was so far removed from my world. It was something that I had, I I looked up to these people before the show happened and then they became on the show and like how incredible. So it was also something that just felt very natural. So, um, they 
held auditions. My entire studio, dance studio, submitted their couples that we had. And Brandon Armstrong and I were partners at the time. We were partners for five years competitively. Um, and we got selected. We competed against Austin Josen, and I believe his partner was Gabby at the time, who are both incredible performers. I am, they are incredible. Um, but it was a surreal experience. I had never danced on television before, and I had never danced in front of like a live camera. Um, where on the other side of that lens sat millions of people. And so I think that was the biggest rush and the biggest kind of uh, reward that I felt from that experience was like, wow, I can do what I love and impact not only just like an auditorium or a stage full of people, a theater full, full of people, but I could, you know, entertain and bring happiness to millions of people through this little tiny lens. I thought that was just so cool. So, um, it was just the awesome, most awesome experience. I had so many amazing supportive friends and family throughout that. And also the pros on the show were just so, you know, encouraging and kind. And it was cool to be in that environment with these people that I had trained with or looked up to for so long. Um, and yeah, then we won and it was just crazy. It was insane. So then flash forward, it's now 12 or 13 years ago. Um, and now I'm out here in LA working side by side with these people again, you know, it's, it's surreal and it's been really full circle and I've built a really incredible family over there at dancing with the stars. And, um, I'm very grateful to have been part of it. That's great. So a few years after winning the Kids Mirror Ball trophy, you moved to L.A. to pursue your dancing career. What was that like and what kinds of classes were you taking when you first went out there? Was it scary? I mean, did you know what what you wanted to do and what type of dance you wanted to specialize in? Did you feel like, ah, oh, this is a whole new world or, you know, tell me? Yeah, I mean, my, my, um, my transition to Los Angeles was very seamless because, you know, after my work on Dancing with the Stars. I later on did Live to Dance with Paula Abdul when I was 17. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was 14, 15. And then when I was 16, I came out and I lived out in LA for three months working on a theatrical production during my junior year of high school. So, you know, leading up to the point where I was 18 and I officially moved out to Los Angeles, it was I was already out here working um, in television and in the, in the commercial industry um, within all styles. Uh, so it was very seamless, and I was very very fortunate to already have built relationships and connections before I got out here. I think that definitely set me up for success in terms of when I moved out here. So when I moved out here, I, um, you know, I already had a pretty good looking resume for somebody who just moved out here. I am a versatile dancer, which means I trained in hip hop, jazz, contemporary ballet, ballroom, tap, anything that the job asked for, I could essentially do or fake, you know? So, um, that is one of my b biggest assets is being able to do it all. Um, because not so many people are lucky enough to have the resources or the places to train in everything. Um, my studio luckily offered all styles. And so that's why I was that fortunate. Um, but, um, I'm trying to think when I first moved out here, I think my first job was, I was Tinkerbell's sister Periwinkle at the El Capitan and I wore a huge wig. I looked <laughs> insane, but you know, they were so kind to me and they were so nice. And I, I've gone back and done work with them before. I mean, after that, since then, and it's just incredible how it comes full circle. This industry is so small and you just never know where people will end up. And it's just really cool. Um, the class environment is so different now, but when I moved out here, you know, we took class to get better. Classes were there to mess up. Classes were there to push you. They weren't there to create YouTube videos. They weren't there to, you know, book you a job. A lot of times going to a dance class now here in Los Angeles, there's, you know, 
other reasons why people go because it, you know, you formulate relationships that way, or you're hoping to get a job and some choreographers and teachers run their classes like auditions because, you know, you never know who might show up. And so, um, it's just very different now, but when I was here, it was just such a cool supportive community and it was just, you just would take class to learn and grow. So I would take like Brian Friedman's class. I would take Marissa Osada, who's a contemporary choreographer. I took a lot of contemporary classes for sure when I moved out here because that's what fed my soul at the time. And I just, I loved it. Um, I think that things really started to pick up for me when I auditioned. It was very slow for a long time. And so you think you can dance auditions rolled around and, you know, before this came around, I was like doing weekly contracts at Dancing with the Stars, but they were like, hmm, do you need more time under your belt or whatnot? So I ended up auditioning for So You Think You Can Dance and making it into their top 20. And that was an awesome experience. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of just set up my whole career because at So You Think You Can Dance, I met Nappy Tabs who I have now worked with since then. I, they, I work with them very closely. And that's where I formulated my relationship with Paul Carmirian, who I have done 90% of my jobs with. We've traveled the world together. He's my my partner in crime in, in my ballroom adventures. And uh, so it's just a really special show to me because that's where I formulated my most awesome and memorable relationships. Nice. So tell me about some of the gigs that you took when you first started in LA. Um, I mean, when I, I, I am one of the lucky ones and I am so incredibly grateful for my journey because I know a lot of people aren't as fortunate and who had to bust tables and had to be baristas and had to, you know, do all the things you, from the time I moved here, I was very, very fortunate with the opportunities that I was given. Um, very shortly after I worked out here, I moved out here. I booked. So you think you can dance from, so you think you can dance. I went on to booking Ed Sheeran's music video, thinking out loud, which was an incredible experience. And from there, I went on to Dancing with the Stars, and I've traveled the world. It just like it just didn't ever really stop. Of course, I've had my highs and lows, but um, I was very, very fortunate. Somebody gave me some really awesome advice at a very young age, and they said to me, "No job is too big or too small for you." And I've really tried to keep that to heart throughout all of this, because I think it's easy to get your head up in the clouds here, especially working in television. But, you know, I've done the free jobs. I've done, I've danced around in the Disney costumes. I have danced at cat fundraisers, like feral cat fundraisers. Uh, (laughs) And, you know, I've, I've done all those things, but when I first moved to LA, I would say my first couple of jobs was the one Tinkerbell job at the El Capitan. And then shortly after that, I booked something called Shake It Up, which was like a Zendaya Disney dance show. Um, and I, I was one of their dancers on their dance show in the TV show. And those were my two kind of first jobs out here and really kind of connected me with some really incredible dancers and people. And yeah. <laughs> well, great. Uh, that's pretty awesome. And it's really nice to to have that and be fortunate. And, and sometimes luck just goes your way and you end up landing these amazing gigs and, and you're like, wow, you know, and you just roll. With Absolutely. It, you know? I mean, it doesn't go to like, yes, I've been so incredible and I am, I am super lucky, but also I feel like the reason these opportunities have come my way is because I think I always try to put kindness first because this is a very competitive industry and people can be get ugly when it's competitive. You know, it, it, people get intense and whatever. And I've always strived to not be like that and to create good vibes. And ultimately, something my mom instilled in me in a very, very young age is that you know, we do this because we love it. And the second that we don't love it, we're not doing this anymore. And so I've always tried to keep that to heart. Um, 
with moving forward in my career. Um, and just to create love and happiness and like remind everyone that this makes us happy. This is not a job that you do if you don't like it because it is hard. And there are times that it is so low. Like I can have the dream job of a lifetime to say, it's a five day job, or maybe it's a three month long job. And then I don't have anything for six months. So managing those highs and lows is very difficult. And I like to stress that to people because it's a very, very hard, emotionally stressful job because you never know when the next opportunity is going to come in, or if that next opportunity is even going to pay more than, you know, minimum wage. So it's just important to always remind yourself why you're doing this and create a good vibe because creating a good vibe, I think is the reason a lot of opportunities have come back my way. Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great way to think about it. And uh, I feel like Cher saying this, but if you can turn back time. (laughs) Oh, what would be some advice you would give to yourself when you first started dancing professionally? Oh, boy. I think when I first started dancing professional, what would I say to my young self? Um, I would just sort of reiterate that because I was on, you know, one of the biggest number one television shows at such a young age, I think I got a little bit caught up in like, oh my gosh, like I need to have the car. I need to have the place. I need to have the excellent. And I think, you know, I got a little carried away with that at, at one point. And I think I would just remind myself to like Stick, stick your nose to the ground and keep working. And of course I kept working, but I think I um, got a little excited, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and also I would have told myself to invest in more than just dance because it's important to okay. be, I, I mean, I am still considered a, a younger person here in Los Angeles. And um, I, I learned let's say 2017, I had shoulder surgery. And I learned that, you know, this is not forever. So it's important to have other skills, whether that be in the entertainment world or have a, not a backup plan, but just other skills to help you while you're down or help you during those like low times of no work or in a pandemic or whatever. Or when an injury happens. So there's so many dancers that like don't know what to do when all of a sudden their knee goes out and they can't dance for two years or whatever it may be. Um, so I think that would be a, a, something that I would remind myself younger is just to like, you know, be open to all opportunities outside of dance and within dance. Yeah. And, you know, you bring that up makes me think about a long time ago when I remember Paula Abdul since you had brought her up earlier, she had all those back and neck mm-hmm. fusions and she had all kinds of surgeries and stuff like that. And she was in a lot of pain. And I remember her making that pivotal shift from the dancer to the choreographer mm-hmm. full time. Yeah. Well, I mean, which is also yeah. choreography is also something that you can't do forever either. It's hard. Um, but I actually just worked with Paula Abdul last summer. I did her Vegas residency. Um, so it was kind of cool to circle back and come for full circle and, uh, work with her again. She's a really hardworking lady and it was a good time. <laughs> I love Paula Abdul. She's one of my oh, favorites. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and I watched her when she was on American Idol too. I believe she was one of the judges on one of the seasons I watched. Um, and it's just really cool. So, so when you joined Dancing with the Stars season 20, I mean, you were dancing with all these famous people, Taylor Swift, Pitbull, Huey Lewis, Old yeah. School, Patti LaBelle, mm-hmm. Old School, right? So were you totally like starstruck? I mean, what was the hardest thing dancing with such a diverse group of performers? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, have, I have really danced with some diverse people for sure. Um, the thing about dancing with the stars is sometimes those performers came on for specialty numbers. So they're like, um, like guest artist performances. So they would come and sing their songs and then I would dance around them with my partners and stuff. Um, but 
other times, like Patty LaBelle was actually a contestant on the show. So then my role becomes a very different role. It's more supporting her in a different way rather than um, dancing to her music. But she is, oh my gosh, she is just an angel, that woman. Um, but working on Dancing with the Stars, I think, has pushed me to be the most versatile person and dancer, of course, uh, but being a well-rounded person, I think helps juggle those different styles of artists and different types of personalities that you run into on shows like Dancing with the Stars, or if you're just working here in this industry. Um, I don't know that there was anything hard. I think the hardest part about working with artists is just being adaptable. Um, you're there to help their song look the best, give their song the best view. Right. <laughs> um, and you know, it's just, it's, it's like working in any sort of profession. It's managing personalities and being pleasant to work with. I think that would be the hardest part about the job is you never know who, what kind of artist is going to show up and if they're going to want you to talk to them or, or, have input or whatever that may be. I think it's just like managing those personalities. Yeah, that makes sense. Most everyone is so incredibly is kind, you know, and there's been very few experiences where I've had a bad taste in my mouth, but um, very few times have I been starstruck. I'm not a very starry eyed person because at the end of the day, everyone goes home and takes a poop. <laughs> <laughs> nice we'll be sure to get that and i mean that's i mean as wonderful as they may seem that's what i always have to remind myself but i think you know sometimes i get a little excited because i admire someone's work or artistry or their performance or like i admire them as an artist rather than like celebrities uh just because I think I've just mm. been exposed to them for so long and at a young age, I learned really quickly that they're just like you and me. And the core takeaway is at the end of the day, they're taking Every, poop. And that's that. They have to poop too, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. <laughs> oh, I love that. So let's talk about when you were doing Dancing with the Stars, the live tours and you were traveling, I can imagine it was exhausting. I mean, how did you find the time to practice and be on top of your game? I'm really honest with you, especially when I, let's see, I started touring when I was 19. Um, and I did that for about three or four years, twice a year. And, um, Mm -hmm. You know, you are already burning so much and working so much just doing a two hour show every single night. Dance is like no other workout anyone's ever had. It's insane what it does to your body. And it's, at this time, I did not take care of myself very well. I did not, um, <laughs> I didn't work out. I didn't really stretch. I didn't do yoga. It was really terrible. Um, and that caught up with me. I, it resulted in a shoulder injury, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was the best time. I loved being on the road and being with my friends and getting to be, wake up in a new place every single day and get to explore that area and, and meet people from all over the country and from all walks of life and meet so many kind people all over the place. Um, it was just a really fun chapter of my life for sure. So mentioning people that you've met and the kind people that you've met, who, if anyone, did you connect with most on these tours and what did you do on, you know, in your days off with, with these different people? I mean, was, was there ever a love interest or... Like relationships. I mean, oh my gosh! You know, um, I have always been not attracted to dancers, so I, there are no love interests. But um, I, you know, on my first two tours, Paul Carmirian was with me, and he is one of my 
closest friends even to this day. So that's one relationship that I really, really took from what those tours. Um, but as far as the dancing with the stars tours, uh, we all just get so close, but I would have to say Emma and Sasha Farber are dear, dear friends of mine. And like I was in their wedding and we talk almost, you know, four or five times a week. Like we just loved hanging out with each other. But also on the other hand, you know, Lindsay, Whitney, Jenna, I've known those girls since I was five years old. It was like I was on tour wow. with my family, with my sisters. Like we were on the same dance teams. We competed with each other. We had sleepovers with each other. We would go into each other's like school friends things. And like, we were all just so close for so long. So it's really hard to really mm-hmm. pinpoint anyone specific, but I would say like the girls and Sasha and Emma, I would definitely have spent my most of my time with on my days off. Um, but I love everyone. There's never been a tour that I didn't like, and it just really unifies you and brings you guys together and you just get to experience so much coolness, but I will say it takes a toll (laughs) traveling every day on a bus, uh, summer and winter and summer and winter gets really tiring sometimes. But, you know, now I'm in COVID and I haven't traveled in ages and I'm missing the days. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's such an adjustment with COVID and, and I can't wait just like the rest of America. Oh, I feel like it goes I away. Think away. I think it's more <laughs> how do we adapt moving forward and, you know, how do we adapt? How do we resume yeah. our lives in a healthy well, and safe way? Yeah, and eventually mm-hmm. we will have a vaccine and, and we'll be able to cope and move forward. But yeah, I mean, it's a totally different lifestyle. Everybody's wearing masks. People aren't leaving their homes. And yeah, it's well, really it's an emotional stress on yeah. you just having all of this. I have made sure to like check in with all my friends on their mental health during this whole year. It's, it's <laughs> just, it's hard, especially with people who live alone. And that's at the beginning. Wow, it was mm-hmm. insane. Yeah, and actually they said that pet adoptions are yeah. way up yeah. Uh, yeah. since COVID because yeah. people are lonely and they want companionship. And, you know, that's why dogs and cats are being adopted left and right. I felt culprit day, of this. Great. We got a quarantine baby named Frankie, and she is a little nugget. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> So cute. Uh, what type She's of... She's a French bulldog. ...dog is it? I have two French bulldogs, yes. Oh, nice. Um, have you No, it, neither of them know them. how, and I'm disappointed, but I don't even know how, so it's like, I don't really know that I need to teach them. <laughs> I don't know. I hear you. I'm afraid of heights, so I will not even get on a... No, my God. It's just it's too high. Really it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> So let's mm-hmm. talk about Ed Sheeran and you were in his music video yes. thinking out loud, weren't you? So spill the beans. <laughs> I want to hear everything well, in detail. Well, um, that was an awesome experience. Like I said before, I had just gotten off of Derek and Julianne Huff's tour and I was home in Utah for a couple of weeks for like a, a job that was out there. And so it was nice to be with my family. And uh, I received a phone call from Tabitha and Napoleon, who I previously met through So You Think You Could Dance, and then they later on did Derek and Julianne Huff's tour. So I, this was a relationship that I was slowly growing. And Tabitha called me, and she's like, hey, are you available these days? I, I might have a, a project. I'm working with Ed Sheeran on his latest music video. He's never been in a music video before. Um he always makes cameos, but he wants to dance and he wants to dance for the whole song. Um, we're really not sure what your involvement will be, but we do know that we want you to kind of help us create it. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, of course, like flattered. I'm 19 years old. I'm not Tabitha and Napoleon Dumel are like top of the game. And like, they are, the top in our industry for sure. Um, so I was of course stoked at the opportunity and I was a fan of Ed Sheeran's before, like his music is incredible. And this was before he did more pop music Mm -hmm. 
we loved him in Utah. <laughs> so, uh, I go back to LA and they're like, okay, so Ed Sheeran has a Jimmy Kimmel interview. We're going to just kind of meet him backstage and see what his abilities are. And we'll go from there. So I go with them. It was just mm-hmm. the three of us who are, um, meeting him in his dressing room. And we just talk and ask him about his expectations and what he wants to do. And we kind of have him lift me around and give him a few patterns of footwork just to see what we're working with. Cause we wanted him to look the best. We want to create it for him. So after we're done kind of playing around with some movement and whatnot, he turns and looks at me and is like, so are you the girl I'm dancing with? And Napoleon and Tabitha look at each other and look at him and they're like, yep. (laughs) So that's how it started. (laughs) From there, we just, you know, Paul Carmirian, the, the guy I was talking to you about earlier, he and I were partners at this time. And so we helped create this routine with nappy tabs. Once we created it here in Los Angeles, they sent us on the road with him. He was doing his American leg of his tour. And we just practiced as much as possible. We taught him the full four minute number within a matter of three ish weeks. And we would practice in corridors and dressing rooms and empty arenas and whatnot, anywhere we could really find time and space, we would rehearse with him. And he was such a hard worker. It was such an awesome journey. And I mean, we really all became family on that. It was a really awesome camp of people. We had Jason and Jenny Koenig who did, um, the behind the scenes video of thinking out loud, as well as Ed's cousin, Murray Cummings, who also did his movie a couple years ago. So it was just like such a bonding experience and all of us still keep in touch to this day. And it's just, it was a really cool thing. Um, but when we finished, we kind of concluded our rehearsals. We flew back to Los Angeles. He met us here and we filmed it in the Biltmore hotel in one day, one very, very long day. And little did we know that three point, whatever, two point, whatever billion people, I don't even know what it's at now. It's inconceivable to me. Like I have no, (laughs) I still can't comprehend it, but (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so it was an awesome experience and I loved it. That's awesome. It's so exciting and it must make you feel so good. You I'm know, very proud of, part it. of that. Thank you. <laughs> so what was a typical day while you were on an international tour with Ed to perform? How did, how did um, that go? Was you that know, it was like? very chill, honestly, because he would have wake up and have press and whatever he needed to do throughout the day. And then at about anywhere in between like 11 and five, we would get some rehearsal time in and then he would get ready for his show. He would have a show. We would watch it from backstage or really anywhere in the venue. And it was so cool because we got to watch his concert every single night. There's so many videos of us backstage being idiots, but, um, it was just a really fun time. And at that time, Rudimental, who is a UK band, um, was opening for him. And Anne Marie was actually their lead singer. So Anne Marie is a, I don't know if you're familiar with her music, but she's a big pop artist now. And she's just blown up. I'm so, yeah. it's so cool to see that journey for her. But, um, yeah, and then afterwards we would just eat and hang out and play board games on the tour bus, and it was just a really awesome, chill group of people. That's so cool. And you were also on, yes. so you think you can dance too, right? Um, it How was a short-lived experience for me, but also one of the best. I think it was just like the best experience that any dancer could have because it really puts you to the test. It puts your mind, your heart, and your body at you know, stretches it to all the lengths that it can go. And it challenges you a lot. And I was so grateful for the experience. Um, everyone on my season, I'm so proud of because they've come so far and they've built the most incredible careers. And, um, I was on season 10 of Saving Dance, if you don't know, but 
That includes Haley Herbert, who's on Dancing with the Stars, Alan Bursting, who's on Dancing with the Stars, Jenna Johnson, who's also on Dancing with the Stars, Paul Carmerian, who is like starring in every Camila Cabello, Ed Sheeran music video ever and living his best acting life. Um, Jasmine Harper, who is one of Beyonce's dancers, was on that season. Um, and there, there's there's so many. Nico Greetham, he's in Meryl Streep's newest movie called Prom. He's like he's an actor in it. Like I'm just so stoked to be part of this awesome elite season of rock stars and to have built those friendships because we all keep in touch still. And it's just you know when you're on that show, you become family. And I really believe that. I, I, I mean that, you know, it's been how many years later, seven, eight years later, and we all still keep in touch and to support each other and encourage each other. And it was just an awesome experience, but I was actually eliminated first from my season, but you know, I still had an awesome time. I was there for three weeks total on the actual show, but my season, they actually wanted to try out a new format and eliminate us at the beginning of the episode and then make us dance with our partners after. And that was the worst. Needless to say, they never did that ever again. (laughs) But I I was eliminated and it's a very intense experience. So I'm crying and then they're trying to like wipe my mascara off my face and I have to go back out and dance with my partner. And obviously I want him to succeed. And it was just like, oh my gosh. But... I learned a lot of really awesome lessons there and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, for sure. And I, I believe I remember that, uh, season that, that took place in uh, like the summer, yes, like July, yes. right? Yeah. Cause I remember mm-hmm. my birthday is July 3rd and I think I remember. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a good memory. Second. Couldn't too. even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember because I watched like, that's awesome. Episode. Which one was your favorite season um, for me? Uh, no, why? Yours, What's your course, favorite? <laughs> um, well, you know what? The first season was awesome because it was really the first time getting rolled out. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it from that perspective. Um, but I mean, th- I mean, there's been so many I talented the old dancers. seasons with the old um, stage. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. And, and just to watch the show evolve. You know, it, it's hard to really commit to saying, hey, this one's yeah. my favorite and that one's my next favorite. But I do remember you on that season. Oh, my gosh. You, I like, love it. On my birthday. You know what's really funny? Is and, people think oftentimes that I'm yeah, Amy Yakima, who won, who won my season. She, people <laughs> used to think that we were sisters. I mean, now that we're both a little older, I don't think we look so much alike. Uh, but when we were 19, 20, however old she was, we looked very similar. Yes. Yeah, and Amy won that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then I think it was like Yeah, so Amy Amy Yakima and Fiction Fiction Duchant. Uh he they both won that season and then Uh the runners up were Jasmine Harper and Aaron Turner. Okay, right. Jasmine's Jasmine's partner partner was was Aaron Turner. Right. Aaron Turner. Okay. Paul was Paul, um, Paul and Mackenzie Dustman were partners. Haley and Curtis, who is okay. a Broadway right. star now, were partners. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I remember. Yeah, okay. Okay. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, impressed with me. Um, yeah, and then we there was and Mariah, Alexis, myself, Mariah, Jasmine Mason, Jasmine Harper, Melise. Or, Jenna Johnson, Melise Miller, yeah, mm-hmm. Tucker and Nico, um, uh, what Curtis, Jade, oh, oh, Soul, oh, Jade. Blueprint, Nico, yeah, there was a good, good group. Carlos, mm-hmm. yeah, Carlos, wow, Carlin, right, I remember. Wow, 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 what a lifetime ago. I know, right? Time flies. Um, no, but that's awesome. No, so, no, really, it's like, good. Well, it's good. Dance, but Who would you say is your up. favorite? <laughs> so you think you could dance dancer? If you had to meet one of them, well, who would it be? I mean, Derek. Well, Derek. I mean, oh, from like Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, Derek's the best ballroom oh, dancer. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Dancing with the Stars. Awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then um, I would say, uh, hmm, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, oh, yeah. I would say Aaron Turner was really mm -hmm. good. Very kind. Yeah. So I would. Yeah. I can see that. So switching gears a little bit, you worked as an assistant choreographer for the TV show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. What were some memorable moments? <laughs> Crazy Ex-Girlfriend was incredible. Um, my first time ever working on the show was actually as a dancer. I had never met Catherine Burns before. She's the choreographer of the show. And um, she just hired me on a whim. And I was so grateful because I came to set and she was just the best vibes ever. She has a background in comedy. She loves to have fun. She loves to create a cool environment. And we just really jam jived on that job. And so from there, you know, our relationship kind of was nurtured and she had an opportunity a couple seasons later to bring me on as an assistant choreographer for a <laughs> a piece called Horny Angry Tango. If you haven't and it was the <laughs> funnest thing. I got to bring on my friend Paul again to help us because it's always easier just to do with another body. Um, and yeah, you know, working in scripted television is a very, very different job than working in reality TV. Um because, you know, it's written very specifically. So that was my first time ever working in scripted. I got to work with um, Rachel Bloom, who is the executive and, and lead on the show. And she was awesome. And she danced as a kid. But it was really cool to be able to, like, you know, work on something that she doesn't know ballroom or partnering in that kind of vocabulary. So it was cool to work on her with that. And, you know, she's just a rock star. So I had the best time ever. And... You know, since then, I've worked with Catherine a lot and uh, assisted her on some of her scripted work. And every single time I'm with her, she just bestows so much knowledge upon me and she just shares so much um, insight and encourages me so much. And I'm just very, very grateful to Catherine for um, a lot of opportunities and lessons learned. Nice. So I thank you. Page. Congratulations <laughs> on that. So, um, you know what? Honestly, we haven't even begun. <laughs> um, we are, you know, we've been together for three and some change years now. Uh, well, three and a half years now. Oh, this year's flown by, guys. But, uh, he is just the best. But he asked me to marry him in May on my birthday, and it was just so perfect. Oh. And, I am wearing his great grandmother's ring. It's just so special to me and to us. And we're very, um, we're very Aww. chill people. So this year has been kind of a really big blessing to us. I was gone for maybe seven months of last year and we were apart. So it's been really awesome to be able to spend this time together and just be together. So we're just enjoying being engaged, enjoying being together. And I think in the spring we'll, we'll start planning, but I think we're more aiming towards 2022. Okay. And yeah, I mean, we're in, in no rush. We're okay. so young and you know, we know what we want and we know what our life wants to look like. Uh, but you know, there's really no rush to get to the finish line. Sure. No, that makes sense. And you said it was on my birthday. So, uh, actually, your birthday? <laughs> a couple of weeks later, he had a uh -huh. Airbnb whole trip planned out to Catalina Island, um, California. And um, mm -hmm. then COVID happened. And so all of that had to nice. cancel. And, you know, we had okay. been stuck in the house for this was at the beginning of COVID, really, in May. It was a couple of months in, and we hadn't left the house in without, <laughs> without our sweatpants on in ages. So um, you know, my birthday was kind of really the first time that we had an excuse to like put on clothes and leave the house. And he was like, I just I need to show sure. it. Because it was hiding, he is hiding the ring by our water heater. He's like, oh my gosh, just getting anxiety. This COVID thing isn't going away. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he just, you know, he had no plan really. He, 
we were supposed to actually meet in Paris for New Year's Day, and my work ended up <laughs> making us not do that. Um, and he was going to do it there. And then obviously the Catalina trip got postponed or canceled because of COVID. And so all of his plans were just like slowly not working out. And he just was like, he decided the night before. And he was just like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. He's like, it just feels right. It was actually the most incredible weekend because that was the weekend that the bioluminescence was like vibrant. If you don't know what bioluminescence is, look it up. It's incredible. It's where there's this certain type of algae that comes once every 10 years or something crazy like that. And it makes the ocean. Yeah illuminate in fluorescent blue and so it's beautiful so yeah the night prior to this we were um out helping a friend move and we saw the bioluminescence and there were like dolphins in the water and it was just like (laughs) i don't know it was the most incredible evening ever and he was just like you know what i'm gonna do it tomorrow everything just feels so right i i feel so happy like this is so that's the moment he decided to do it and, um, cut to the next morning. I'm like on my phone all morning, talking to my friends who's FaceTiming me for my birthday. I'm so like, whatever. And he's like, okay, when you're done, like put on a sundress, we're going to just go have a picnic. And so he like packed a cute little picnic and we just went up for a drive. We had no idea where we were going and he didn't know at all. And now, now in retrospect, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're acting like such a weirdo. Why would you tell me what to wear? You've never said anything <laughs> about my outfits. So it was cute though. And and so we actually drove up the Malibu mountains and found this random kind of area to pull off and there was this cute tiny little walk it didn't look like a major trail but like just like a mini trail (laughs) and we just set up camp and you know during quarantine we have been looking through old footage of our grandparents and of our families and stuff and we've just been talking about creating more videos and stuff and so he's like you know let's bring your camera let's make like a fun little video and whatever and so I brought my camera so we set it up and then uh, he just got super emotional and decided to do it right then and there. And I was just like, I think in the video, I'd say, oh, my gosh, probably 29 times. And it's just it was so perfect. It was just us. It was so Aww. intimate. And um, we are just so happy. Oh, <laughs> Thank really you. Sweet. Thank really you. you. We're excited. And I wish the best of luck. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us as far as yeah. where we can find you on social media? Oh or my God. Frankie and Louie have their Louis Instagram. Louis They're called them. at, their Instagram is at the Lil Frenchies, L-I-L Frenchies. They're hysterical. Brian's in charge of their Instagram. So their captions are really <laughs> funny. Um, and, uh, they are a slice right. of joy in our life. And we do not deserve dogs they are just the most amazing creatures but if you guys want to check me out and follow me my social all my socials are at it's brit cherry b-r-i-t-t cherry like the fruit and um yeah i have instagram twitter tiktok i unfortunately caved to the tiktok life guys I know i did it i recently started doing it (laughs) i i fell into a trap and now I can't stop. So you guys can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Uh-oh. anywhere, just by looking my name up. Brittany Cherry, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y, Cherry, like the fruit, or at It's Brit Cherry. And hopefully I can see you there. <laughs> well, Brittany <laughs> Cherry, it's lovely talking to having you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on TV with some new moves and I uh, wish you the best of luck and again, congratulations on your I wedding. wish you so and much health and happiness going into the holiday season and just make sure you stay safe and stay happy. Thank you, likewise. All right, everybody, Brittany Cherry, thank you so much and have a great Bye. day. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, take care. And to our listeners at home, thank you for joining us with another edition of A Breath of Fresh Marketing. Stay safe, be well, and take care. Bye-bye now.